I've managed to source another instrument cluster for a Volkswagen Fox on the internet which we're going to use to donate the parts to our cluster. I'm going to try and turn £500 into my dream Volkswagen transporter van. Fingers crossed the Lupo is about to go. I have just had the uh, most unsuccessful car sale or purchase ever. That's a wrap on the little trailer jobby. It was definitely a little stepping stone. We've now ended up with some airlift suspension to try and make the next bit of money for ourselves a VW Fox. Oh no. Our first attempt at fixing the screen was to change the ribbon that soldered between the motherboard and the screen itself, replaced it back into the cluster and, well, it didn't actually work. It hasn't fixed it. Oh, after all that. I can only think that this means one of two things. Either we haven't aligned the stripes up with the motherboard when we've re-soldered it back together or the LCD screen is actually at fault and we should have changed that and not just the connection between the two. So I guess we're going to have to go back to the drawing board for this one. Let's strip this thing out together and we'll have a little chat. So why am I doing all this? Well, to be honest with you, I'm a bit mad because, well, it's quite obvious I could have gone out and got some finance put a bit of money down, a bit of a deposit, got some finance, and then I could have quite easily got myself my transporter that I wanted. So why haven't I just financed it? Well, obviously finance is easier. I could have quite easily put a deposit down, saved myself all this hassle, paid a bit of finance, and then, well, I would have had the car I wanted without having all the aggro. But something clicked. I thought, instead of doing it the easy way, why don't I do it the hard way? Make some YouTube videos along the way, make some friends, and just have a little bit of fun doing it in the process. Most people can go out and get finance and just get a car, a piece of cake, but doing it this way, well, I've definitely earned it. Another reason as well, which has given me the sort of motivation to uh, take on this journey is, I don't know about you, most young lads growing up even adults who are into cars have watched mike brewer and ed china on wheeler dealers fixing up cars buying restoring and selling you might have watched gas monkey fast and loud and all the other programs that are surrounding it not so long ago well not so long ago a few years back wheeler dealers released a new program with Mike Brewer, Dream Car. And they were doing a similar thing. They were taking someone, a random person who had a dream car, they took their current daily driver and whatever funds they had, and they tried to trade what they had into that person's dream car. Which is sort of where I've got the idea from. I know I'm not original and lots of people have done this, but I just thought it was a cool thing to jump on with and try and give it a go myself really. Now we're going to have to lower the steering wheel and hopefully oh, try and get the trim tool, oh maybe not, the dashboard will just pull away like that, nice and easy and then we've just got the little T25 screw in the top to remove the actual cluster. And jobs are good and we now need to get on with stripping the donut cluster apart to get the LCD display out of it. Now obviously you need to be careful with this because I don't want to damage the LCD screen when we take it out. But the actual plastic casings and things itself around it I'm not too worried about it has already got a crack in it and well I don't think there's anything on it that's any use to us other than the LCD display so I am just going to snap off all the clips just to make this thing a bit quicker to get apart really 
I've got so much riding on this being able to fix our little problem because if I can't get this fixed this way, we're going to have to sell the car without a working display which is going to put off potential buyers and the only alternative to getting this fixed is sending it off to a professional paying in the region of £125 and that just really isn't a financial option that we can take. But we've almost got the screen removed now. Obviously, like I said, I'm not being as careful as I should be because all we care about is the gold, which is that LCD display. Once that's removed, we can crack on with the next stage. Here we go. Now we've retrieved the little LCD display, we can go ahead by stripping our cluster apart. Obviously, a little bit more careful than we did with the last one. And then start the process of getting the new screen soldered in. Bottle of vodka is out again for take two. I think if this doesn't work, I might end up drinking it. Because if this doesn't work, well, we're going to have to try and sell the car with no instrument cluster. And that is really going to put people off if they can't see the mileage of the car. So cross your toes and your fingers. And hopefully we're about to have a working LCD display in our little fox. What a waste of money. I was just weighing up the two different screens. Now, it's very minimal, but the new screen is obviously out of a newer cluster, which means that it's not actually the same size. It's too big and it won't actually fit in the holder of our instrument cluster, which means I've just wasted £50 on trying to fix this thing how soul destroying which means I guess I'm just gonna have to re-solder the screen back in and just pass it on to the new buyer that I tried to fix it but it's gonna have to go to a specialist so I guess all that's left now is to put this thing back together and just try not to drop a tear or two in the motherboard when I'm trying to rebuild it. Now, I think we might have sort of done it. Now, it is a little bit pixelated still, however, we have got more numbers on the dashboard. You can clearly see that 79,192 miles, the clock's working, the odometer is there, trip counter's there. It is a little bit disheartening because I think I may have spent £50 on the new screen and it was definitely a waste of money, but we are a little bit closer than we were before. Now, honestly, I think this may have been my fault when I put the new screen or when I changed the ribbon for the cluster to the LCD display I don't think I actually soldered the bit of paper between the two properly but at the end of the day I can live with that because you can clearly see the mileage and someone who wants to buy this I don't think will be put off by that whilst we're on the topic of failures Let's address this failure. Now, I'm absolutely at a wit's end trying to find a new wing for the Fox and well, it's actually really stressing me out. We had sourced a new wing for the Fox but the scrapyard actually crashed into it with a forklift. Even they got wind again off a big crash for a forklift in the yard. But I may be on to a little lead finding a new one. I've just logged into Facebook Marketplace and I may have found one in the right colour for £20. The only drawback it's in Bristol, so I may have to pay a little bit of a shipping cost, but fingers crossed it's in good enough condition and in a good enough colour to be able to match it to the Fox, saving us absolutely loads of money. Here it is then, so £20 VW Fox Wing. It looks a little bit like navy blue, but I don't think they made one in that colour. And it's up, it's in Bristol, 
for £20. So fingers crossed we can get that ball. New wing has turned up for the little fox. It's not absolutely perfect, but I think it's going to fit the bill for what we need it for. So without further ado, let's crack on and get this thing fitted because I have a whole host of people fighting over buying this car. Wasting no time, I set about getting the wing reinstalled back on the car, paying extra attention to where the wing meets the A-post because it's quite tight between that and the bonnet and we didn't want to cause any further damage. Reinstating the 10mm nuts on top of the wing but not doing it too tight that we can't adjust any adjustments later on because we need to make sure this thing lines up perfectly so it looks factory fresh. Now we then put the fixings in for the wing that sit behind the bumper. Then we move on to the finishing touches such as plastic trim. With the plastic trimming we can then focus our attention on machine polishing this thing so it matches the paintwork on the rest of the car, removing any slight imperfections that are in it. Oh, well that is a wrap on the little fox. There's a couple of things I'd like to still do to it but I'm going to officially say the fox is now ready to be sold. I've got somebody come to look at this thing at half past four and fingers crossed I've got a feeling they're gonna take it. Unfortunately that is the end of the video and if you have enjoyed it hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and check in again next week to find out if this thing did actually sell. But until next time, peace out.